So we are actually going to cook this fish live right here on the show so we can show you how quick we can take this wow. from the, the refrigerator and get it on the table in less than an hour. So we're going to get started, and then I'm going to ask you the questions. Yeah, absolutely. So first we have our red snapper here, and you've dredged it with something. Yeah, um, this is basically just a really light dredging. Um, it's just cornmeal and cornstarch. I chose that because it keeps it gluten-free, which also oh. is a nice little perk to it. Okay. Um, the goal is not to have a really battered, heavy coated fish. It's really just to create a light crust on it that gives that nice crispiness to the outside. Okay. So we put it on our do? piping hot yeah. cast iron skillet, right? Right? right into a nice hot pan, and you should hear that sizzling. That means you're okay. doing something right here. All right, so this this fish is so thin that it can overcook very quickly, and it's over. Are there any tips to not overcooking it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, when you're working with a light fish like this, a thin fish, really the the easiest way to treat it is to go mm. on medium high heat and really just go for color on both sides. About three minutes on each side, right. flip it over. Um, but I do have a little trick. If you use a toothpick mm -hmm. on any fish and you just poke right through the fish, if you meet any resistance, it still needs more time. But if it goes right through, it's fully cooked. So as what soon as it goes tip. right through, um, it's good and you don't have to worry about overcooking it. Oh my gosh, it's just like brownies. What a great <laughs> idea. You're just the brownies. I love that. All right, so while these cookers are going to do it live, like we said, we are going to move on over to our Swiss chart. Mm. And you're also going to tell me about the story that this is really a family recipe that you've grown up with that you just sort of zhuzhed up. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd spend a lot of time fishing with my family and with my dad. And whatever we'd catch, we'd take home and uh, sort of put together. And uh, grits was one of those things that we'd make all the time. But I've kind of done a the new version of it and, and added a bunch of flavor to it. So this is the kicked up version. We're actually serving one of my re restaurants at the Ritz Carlton in Lake Tahoe. I love it. Where did you grow up? Uh, in, between Florida and North Carolina. Oh, so, so lots of fishing. Yeah, me too. Fishing, Virginia. Lots of grits. Yeah, lots of grits. <laughs> that's true. All right, now the rainbow shard. Yes. I, I love that you're serving this with the rainbow shard, not just because of the beautiful color, but mm -hmm. I also am a big fan of shard. A lot of people don't buy it at the store because they don't really know how to prepare it. Right. Now you can eat both the stem and the leaf, but they cook at different temperatures or at right. different times. So this is actually one of my favorite greens and especially as we're getting into fall, um, you can really start to see this, this beautiful green a lot more in the stores. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way to strip it is to basically pull from the stem down. Wherever it breaks, it's fine. Okay. And separate the stem from the leaves and essentially wow. just chop through this. As you can see. Yeah. And then like use this as the first step of when you saute. So okay. just a couple minutes. Oh. So um, put the stems in first. Yep, and throw that in there. I use a little bit of onion as well. Um, and then this will just kind of rough chop through. With just olive oil? Uh, yep, so saute with just a little bit of olive oil. And you can see here, I've already done it. I started with the onions and shallots. Um, and then added in the stems first. Okay, for um, a few minutes? Yep, just for a few minutes. And then you add in the leafy greens after that. And really, it cooks a lot like spinach, really quickly. Oh, um, okay. So I deglaze with a little bit of wine. All right. And um, then as soon as it's wilted, it's done. So in total, would you say four minutes, five minutes? Maybe four minutes, five minutes okay, total. So it but goes fast. they're not all day greens like collards or. or I know, oh my gosh. Collards <laughs> are like three day greens, not even all day right, greens. Right. All right, so. Should we flip our fish or should yeah, we leave let's, it? Let's check let's it. flip the fish and then let's talk about your really fancy grits. Now, I've heard of a lot of different kind of grits, covered and smothered and all kinds of stuff, but I've never heard of goat cheese grits. Yeah. How so, did you even come up with the idea to put goat cheese and grits? It's working. Let me just say that. It's working. That's I mean, delicious. These are really tasty. Great, yeah. great. So I, I ended up... Um, making some grits and wanting to, you know, kick them up and, and make them a little bit more flavorful. So what I did was I added lemon juice, lemon zest. Mm. Um, my liquid in here is essentially half uh, chicken stock and half either uh, heavy cream or milk. Um, and then the real trick is finishing it with goat cheese. And what this does is it adds a nice tanginess uh, to the grits as well as a creaminess. Did you put any butter in there as well? There's a little bit of butter a in there. A little bit, okay, yeah, yeah. because you know, grits. you have to put lots of butter in grits. You now, can omit it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Why would you? <laughs> I can't imagine growing up you were eating grits like this. I, I wasn't. I, I think I, I was eating them the wrong way the whole time because uh, I was eating them with water and that's it. Maybe a little bit of salt if I was lucky. And then I started adding cheese and I was like, wow, that's, that's really good. And I was adding more of this, more. Before I know, um, I, I'm at this sort of uh, rendition of the grits, which are, are a bit right, which are, are closer to a polenta. It, really, it's it's yeah, essentially that's what it the is. same thing. Right? It is like when people go, "I've never had grits." I said, "Have you had polenta? You've had grits." Exactly. It's just exactly. what we call them in the South. Right. <laughs> All right, is our fish ready? Just about. Let's check it. Let's check. 
Oh, uh, we got to leave it a second? Yep, just another second. All right, this so we'll, you know what there. we'll do? We'll plate the shard and the yep. grits first. Absolutely. And as you're doing that, I'll ask you, I know uh, your, your mom taught you how to cook, right? You, you learned your cooking from your mom. Yeah, my mom and my dad are and both, your dad too. both great cooks. Um, so they actually kind of taught me a lot of the basics, and, and I took what they would make and really sort of just elevated it just a little bit. And, like this. Um, would they so agree with that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, they, they would. They, they would. would, all right. I, they put me sure. in the kitchen when I get home uh, oh, good. to visit for holidays. That's so. a good sign. Yeah, yeah I don't exactly. know if we showed those photos, but we have adorable photos of you when you were little cooking. Oh, gosh. Yeah, moms have the ability to. Uh, <laughs> there you are. Wow. <laughs> was that your? Is that your baby bowl? That's how the yeah. magic happens. That's, right that there. Was one of my first bowls of grits, right there. The I, whole uh, thing. I, I hopefully I didn't eat the whole thing. You it, looked very it excited the about size, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Did you always eat without your clothes on? I, <laughs> apparently, I, I guess it was easier. It was less laundry. I don't well, know. You know what? I, the reason I say that because as a mom. Every time Alexandra would sit down, I'd strip her clothes off. You're like, you know what? Take these off. It's just better. better. Man. But yeah, right? You yeah, know what I'm talking smart. about. Okay. Here we go. We have to taste this. I love yeah, that we just actually so we got super tasty. Oh, There's more to it. There's more to it. I was going to I totally that forgot that. about the yeah. peach glaze yes. because as yeah. if, if this, this was not enough, you've come up with this beautiful peach glaze. So, yeah, this is really just, you know, it's it's coming to the end of summer. The stone fruit are still great. We used peaches in this one. You can use apricots, plum, anything. The technique is basically just chopping up some peaches, add a little bit of sugar, a little bit of white wine, um, and really letting it cook nice and slow and low. And it comes together like this, and this with the tangy goat cheese grits, oh, and a little bit God. of this on top is Such just a gorgeous color. Absolutely yeah. I know. delicious. Super it really tasty. is so pretty. A little bit of fresh herbs on Look top there. Oh my and goodness! It's ready to go. It's okay, great. let's you get guys, in here, Mark. You guys dig in, and I'll say to everyone at home for more information on Mark, you can check him out on Instagram at Chef oh And of course, goodness. this recipe is available online at HallmarkChannel.com, so you can see everything in detail there as well.